imagine it's 1400 years ago it's the 9th of Muharram at night you're in your tent you hear noises and commotion from outside so naturally you come out to see what's going on when you come outside you see people leaving in groups of hundreds and thousands as you're looking around for a split second your eyes fall on the face of Abul Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam and you see him looking at his brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam and you decide there and then you're going to stay knowing exactly what's going to happen to you when the morning comes the morning comes it's now the day of Ashura you're the 73rd companion of Abba Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam Imagine on that day you walk up to him to offer your service to ask him where he would like you to serve and he replies it's up to you where would you want to participate on that day It's a very interesting question For me um very recently I was having I was just having a discussion um family and friends um and it's a hot topic salah or azadari everyone every muharram it comes up um but someone brought up the point of the importance of salah then incorporating the importance of the respect of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam and there were those companions who when Abu Abdullah stood to pray protected him in prayer and what greater combination of love for the ahlul bayt and love for the religion could there be than protecting the imam in prayer i would love to have served in that kind of position now imagine you've had a long day at work you come home walk through the front door see your mom dad brothers running around the house frantically one person's gathering fruit another person's gathering tea another person's making food and you grab one of them in that confusion and you ask one of them what's going on who's come round to see us And one of them replies they haven't come to see us they've come to see you. So you ask who is it where are they and they say they're waiting for you in the living room. So you come to the living room you open the door you walk in and you see sitting there waiting for you is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now in that situation what would you say to him what would you like him to say to you what would you have to talk about can really interesting question um just give me a little while to think about this actually it would be difficult because other than both having belief in one god and the messenger of allah i don't think there's that much common between someone as high as imam hussein and someone as low as myself um i'd find it very difficult to hold a conversation if i was in front of any of the imams or any of the ahli bayt um I I wouldn't know what to say. And I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect even to hear anything 
for them to repeat, reply back to me if I did have a question or anything to ask. Um, but if there was anything, it, I would want to know if what I've tried to achieve in my life in upholding the message that Imam Hussain alayhi salam has left behind and to keep stronghold of the religion of God and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam if what I have attempted is seen fit or beneficial in the eyes of Imam Hussain that, was, that, would, all, that would really be all I would want to know So now you've had your discussion with him, your conversation with him and it's time for him to leave your house. As he's walking out the door, he turns back and looks at you. As a farewell message, what would you want that to be? What would you want him to say to you? What would you do in that situation? most likely cry um, probably ask for intercession forgive me for anything I've done wrong because if there is anyone that God will listen to throughout our books throughout hadith it's the shafa of Abu Abdullah we pray for it every day um, so if that's something that he would accept to grant you what more could you ask for in life? So given the magnitude of his sacrifice, what he gave up for Islam and his status before God, as you rightly mentioned, what do you think he deserves from us? in terms of his programs, his majalis, what do you think is our duty towards him? I believe Abu Abdullah gave everything to upkeep the message of Rasulullah which was given to him through Jibra'il from Allah and if we, if we don't even attempt to try and upkeep that message, we're doing an injustice. Holding majalis, holding even any event at a masjid or a Hussainiya, um, gatherings, small gatherings, house gatherings, bring the uh, topic of Ahlul Bayt up with your Muslim, non-Muslim friends. Um, just even creating something as simple as just creating awareness. Uh, and there's campaigns out there trying to teach the people who, who, who was Hussein, who is Hussein, things like that. Um, they're, they're minor sacrifices, they're not even sacrifices. They're, they may be minor inconveniences in our life. You have to go here, you have to go there to try and spread the message of Abba Abdullah. And on the scale of what he's done, we, we do nothing. Um, but like I said, it's like, it's like the frog uh, in the fire of Nabi Ibrahim. Uh, he tried to put the fire out by mouthfuls of water every time he came. And even though it was never going to put the fire out, it was an attempt. And we're never going to be able to meet the requirements of being a soldier of Abba Abdullah. But all we can do is, with whatever we do have, is attempt to be like that. Um, so I think that frog analogy is one of the, one of the biggest roles, that, that frog plays a big role in me relating to how I serve Abba Abdullah. I could never serve him individually. Uh, I could never serve him and fulfill the service required for Abba Abdullah. But you're that small piece of a puzzle in trying to serve him and in doing so, bettering yourself, bettering the people around you, and, you know, in essence, trying to bring back Imam al Mehdi to a better world. At the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago. With, I guess, hindsight, it might be easy to pick a specific event or a specific part of it and say 
If I was there, I would give my life protecting this person in particular, or I would be trying to stop that calamity from falling on this person, or I would aid in, for example, bringing back water with Abul Fadl al Abbas, السلام, or protecting the tents of the women and children. And I guess knowing what we know of that day, it might be easy to, to pick something and say, I would definitely serve. If I was there, I would do this. Now, in today's day, in this day and age, a lot of us often forget that our 12th Imam is among us. And in a way, him being at least physically absent from us is a way where we have the choice in how we want to serve him, given obviously that we follow all the other rules correctly. Now, some say, you know, Imam Hussein had 72 on that day. How many does the Imam have today? So I guess my final question is, what have you done for the 12th Imam? What do you think he deserves from you? And how do you think he feels with you in particular? I well, recite every day, may my life be for your sake, O oh, Imam of our time. May our parents be at your disposal. Um, you know, we say all these things, uh, but if push came to shove, where would we stand? Um, so again, it's a really, really interesting question, interesting point to ponder over. Um, but I'd, I'd refer back to my previous answer where we're all, you know, no one can... I guess we do have the ability, we can have the ability, but we sin too easy. Um, small things that we might not see is, ah, oh, it's minor, it's minor. Um, they add up, they add up and it's, it's when those small, small sins start becoming regular and you lose, you lose a connection. It's why you, you get, what do you call them, that seasonal Muslims or seasonal Shias, the Shias just in Ramadan and Muharram and stuff like that. You lose that connection through minor sins and everyone's guilty of it. Uh, we're told throughout everyone's going to be guilty of it and Again, Allah has given us the ability to push them aside, but we don't. We'll do it, we'll turn a blind eye, we'll turn a blind eye on our friends who do. Amr ibn Ma'roof, Nanhiyan al Munkar is seen as derogatory or um, like you're trying to talk from a high horse. Uh, people don't take to it kindly nowadays. Um, respect in that man is gone. It's difficult. And where, where would I stand? No idea. I, I do what I can. I try. Uh, you know, I run youth projects. I try and better, maybe from my mistakes and the older generation's mistakes, I try and take those mistakes and teach the youth that, when I say youth, I'm talking like 12 to 18 year olds. I try and say, listen, we made these mistakes. Don't fall into that trap. And with technology, with westernization, with modernization, Sinning becomes easier day by day by day, um, and it's 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 just about controlling your nafs. Um, that's why it's known as jihad al-akbar, really. And if if we can know how to control our nafs, it's through knowledge, it's through yaqeen, it's through you know belief in God, belief in the Ahlul Bayt, looking up to them as role models. And if you do that successfully, then I believe you may have a rank in the army of Abu Abdullah uh, of uh, Imam al-Mahdi. But me, probably not. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hello, Charles. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Thank 
خدا کنه خدا کنه 